I play um, the character of Audrey Parker, who's an FBI agent. I think the most interesting thing and challenging thing about the role that I loved is the fact that she was an orphan, so she didn't have a home base. She was always searching, and you know, character searching is really important. But she's sassy, and she's fun, and she's... Um, I like to explain it as sort of a walking awkward moment, you know, she blurts things out and to me I think a lot of the strong women and maybe females that are depicted can kind of be sort of over glamorized and glammed up and I really enjoy playing characters that you could meet and know and feel like you could relate with and I thought Audrey had the potential of being that kind of girl and very much is that girl, you know, jeans low like maintenance no makeup just kind of sassy and does her job really well and i just love that this man's pretty dead tends not to change much chief warnus this is uh... special agent audrey parker oh it's the fbi this could be why i thought i recognized you she looks like you yeah i know you took my clothes you saved your life you must be duke well is this one of those situations where you're here claiming to help but you're really just here to step on my toe Watch out! <laughs> not in these shoes Duke, the character I play on Haven, is probably one of my favorite characters I've ever gotten to play. Um, he is this modern day pirate and smuggler and um, we kept making analogies when, when they told me about, about the show, they kept making analogies to Han Solo and Star Wars. I mean, you can't get better. And, and, and if, you know, my character was this sort of, you know, reinvented Han Solo, then his boat is his Millennium Falcon. And I, you know, at that point you go, I'm in. And I think what makes him really fun is that he's uncompromising. Uncompromising men are easier to like. It's why we don't like politicians, you know? And, and for him, it's, I can lie, cheat, steal to get what I want, and that's okay. But if you lie, cheat, or steal from one of my friends, I'll end you. And it's that simple. It's that clear to him. So it, it's been um, it's been a blast playing him. And to see, I mean, I'm, I've honestly never had the reaction I have from from a fan base as I have for this character. In terms of uh, reading his other novels, I hadn't because I'm not a die-hard fan like that. But The Colorado Kid I did read before the job and I always say that I just was so frustrated. I threw it across the room and I was like, this is horrible! <laughs> I was like, it's never solved. It doesn't make any sense. And then I realized, you know, after I picked it up and I was like, I have to, I have to like it. I have to learn to like something about it. I picked it up and Stephen King at the end is like, n like picks you up like a wounded child and says, it's okay. It's I know what you're going through. This is mystery. This is and I was like, oh, okay, I get it. So you know, our show really explores that. I mean, there, we don't have a we're not a direct depiction, but we borrow some characters and and really bug the audience about going, what is going on? What is this mystery? What something weird is happening? And I think that's what he really wanted to do, is make you ache and think and desire for a solution, but not give it to you. The great thing about our show is we have a really um, deep-rooted mythology, um, questions that need answers that are layered in the past, histories, secrets, um, suspense. Like my sister was watching an episode the other day and she like screamed out loud because she got so shocked by something that happened, which is always a good reaction. Um, and I think that it's something that, you know, it appeals as well because it has this sort of weekly case element. And for some reason, you know, I grew up on like Matlock and, you know, as maybe the answers were right there in front of you as it was at times, I wanted to be the one to solve the mystery every week. And so I think our show offers that. I think, you know, I think Stephen King's name has a big draw, of course, but I think they'll relate to it because, like I said, just like people could relate to Audrey as being this sort of right normal girl. Um, who's had her life turned upside down. We don't film in a studio on the back lot at Warner Brothers in LA or New York or any of that. We film in the wild, you know, we film on the edge of the earth. We film on the sea. We have, you know, our crew guys, they're like 
you know, ocean, like, fishermen guys, and we are, like, with lighthouses and rocks and just really cool scenery. And I think that the world wants to see something different. Although, you know, we have this element of, of horror and, and supernatural um, appeal, there, there's a heart to the show that um, I think, you know, is, is really going to play well internationally because those themes are universal. The way that people care about each other and love each other and take after, you know, look after each other, we all understand that, no matter where, what country or part of the world you're from. It's been a learning experience. I had no, I honestly, I had no idea the scope of this thing. It wasn't until we, you know, we've been on a press tour for about two weeks now. You know, we've been in Paris and London and Spain and it wasn't until we arrived here that I really understood we're going to be in 190 countries. I, and I was like, uh, wow. And then you start to understand and, and the savviness with which E1 works. I mean, I, I can only imagine that the broadcast networks in the States are just about, um, it's the word I'm looking for, crapping their pants. Um, because this business model, uh, while you know, not only just being innovative and, and you know, sort of groundbreaking, it has the potential to, to totally change how we sell and watch television. I mean, it's incredible.